Hello everyone, welcome back to my channel. I hope you all are doing well. And yes, I know it's been a while since I've uploaded a video, but I'm finally back. Don't worry, I've read all of your messages and I've been thinking about which videos to put out next. And I'm really thankful to all of you who have sent me lovely messages and words of encouragement. You have no idea how much that has helped me throughout the past year. Anyway, for the past months, I've been trying out new things and also honing my skills in wire wrapping and weaving. So at least now we have new designs to work with together. Today, we will be focusing on some of the basics. And no, we are not going to learn how I made this ginormous pendant because first of all, I don't know how to make it again. And second, if we do try to, it's going to take a long time to make. <laughs> Instead, I'll be talking about the techniques I used when it comes to making swirls or curls, whatever you want to call them. And this is the first part of a two-part series that I'll be making about swirls. Just a quick disclaimer. I am completely self-taught and have no formal training in jewelry making whatsoever. That means I don't know the exact terminology of each technique I use. I just call them as I see them or how I feel they should be called. So if you guys know the exact terms to use with whichever I'm doing, please leave them at the comment section down below. And now, without further delay, let's get to today's lesson. Currently, I use two types of swirls in my pieces. Let's call the first one the 2D swirl and the other the 3D swirl. <laughs> I know, very creative, right? <laughs> anyway, so what is the difference between the two of them? The first one, as we know, is two dimensional, meaning it's flat, while the other one has more texture so you can feel a variation in length, width, and height. Both types can be used independently or together in one piece, depending on what you want to accomplish visually. For example, in this piece, we have a combination of all of them together. You can see here we have some 2D or flat swirls, although they do have some texture, and a bunch of 3D swirls wherein you can see some depth. For me personally, I would use 2D swirls if I want to create something similar to tribal or even a bit of Aztec inspired jewelry, since most of their pieces use some of these design elements anyway. Also, the beauty of 2D swirls is that you're not limited to only circular shapes. You can also use the same method by creating angled swirls like this for example or layer them if you want them to look thicker. The first type of 2D swirl is one that doesn't involve any frame and is more of like a floating design element. Whereas the second one involves the use of a frame or base wire. I have here one round wire that I've cut to create the swirl. The easiest way to do it is to twirl the wire with a round nose plier and continue it with a flat nose plier like this.
Then you can continue twirling the wire according to the size or density that you want it to be. You can also hammer this or connect it to the frame of your piece. Here I've prepared a frame that will house our swirls. This is a 16 gauge half hard wire which is quite useful when you have a project like this because you want something that won't bend while you wrap wire around it. Next, I've cut two pieces of wrapping wire and attached them to the base wire. You can wrap the wires individually or you can do them at the same time. It really depends on what you're more comfortable with in your design. this type of swirl if I want to make something like an Art Nouveau or classical type of design because it gives more of those filigree or scroll like impressions. As I mentioned earlier, the 3D approach deals with creating textures with the placement of wires. It does take a while to get used to because you have to think about how to layer them more strategically. But once you get it right, it looks so beautiful. One of the ways I know how to use the floating method is by making wire rosettes. This is probably one of the first things I've learned when I started making wire jewelry. There was a tutorial I followed on YouTube by Brandevere, which is the rose guarded hoop earrings. By the way, if you want to watch her video, I've put the link down at the description. And here it is. <laughs> you see? They don't look good, right? <laughs> 
but you know, no, before you laugh at it, you know, I had to start somewhere. And really, I remember I was so proud of them that I actually went to work the next day wearing them. So over the past couple of years of making wire jewelry, I've finally developed my take on making rosettes. I'm pretty sure that there is another method to doing this, or maybe I'm doing it the same way as others, but this is how I make them. Here I have 12 inches of 20 gauge round wire folded in half. Keep a round nose plier where it's folded and twist the wires around the plier. Now, instead of wrapping the wires side by side, overlap them instead. This creates the impression of having flower petals. To end it, just pass the ends through the loop where your pliers were earlier and voila, here's your rosette. In my opinion, this method is probably the toughest one and yet the most beautiful if done correctly. Remember when I said you have to practice this a lot? I mean, yes, you really, really have to because it takes a while to get used to the method. Most of us start out just twirling wire because we don't know what else to do to fill in spaces. And though it looks good, if not done right, it looks really messy, just like this. <laughs> so how do we actually do it properly? You can do this one by one, or you can start with twisting two wires at the same time, and then just, you know, add as you go. In my opinion, if you are going to do this for the first time, it's best to do it with two wires first for your eyes to get used to what it should look like, and then just add more wires later depending on how thick you want your swirl to be. Oh, and by the way, don't forget to subscribe to the channel because I'll be uploading another video after a week on how to make these lovely filigree scroll earrings which is basically the continuation of this tutorial, so stay tuned for that. Now enough talking and let's just do this. Okay, so here's my base wire and a couple of wrapping wires that I've already crimped around it. The first thing we're going to do is to twirl both wires like we did earlier with the 2D swirl, but the difference is we're going to overlap the wires to create depth and connect the wire on the base according to how you want the end of your swirl to look like. 
So if you want it to look flat, then just put them side by side before connecting. Or you can overlap them yet again so that the lines look thinner. Another thing that I want to point out is if you notice, I used two different gauges of wire in this swirl. In this way, we can create a gradiated texture only by using bare wire. I do suggest that if you're going to use two different gauges to keep the thickest one at the bottom of the base wire. And now that we've done that, we are going to add another wire. But this time, we're not going to connect it outside of the swirl. Instead, we're going to start in the middle of the swirl and create something like a vortex. Just like this. Also, if you've noticed, I've used a different type of shape of wire this time. Earlier, I used two square wires and this time I'm using a round wire instead. Try to experiment on which wires work for you but like I said it's best to use your thickest wrapping wire at the bottom and your thinnest wire at the top. And that's how I make my swirls. I hope you've learned something new today and have enjoyed this tutorial. Remember, there's another video coming in later during this week on how I made these earrings. So make sure you're subscribed to the channel and click on the notification bell so you won't miss it if you haven't already. Thank you so much for watching today's video. I know it took some time to make a new video, but you know, life happened and here we are. <laughs> anyway, please don't forget to like this video and leave a message down at the comment section if you have any questions, suggestions, or just want to say hi. Don't worry, I'll read all of your comments and I'll do my best to reply to them as soon as possible. Also, you can follow me at my socials which is Instagram, Facebook, and Patreon. All the links are down at the description box. And that's it, guys. Thank you so much for watching and have a wonderful, wonderful day. Happy wrapping.